Hello everybody, the whole world of YouTube, hopefully. Thanks a lot for tuning in to my second vlog from Beijing, Winter Olympics 2022. My name is Victor Althorp, I'm an athlete. This is my second Olympics. I'm a speed skater from Denmark and I'm competing at the 5,000 meter and the mass start here at the Olympics. If you watched my first video, if you haven't, you should go watch it. If you watched it, you would have seen that I gave you a little introduction to how it is here in the village, at the Olympics. But something happened since that. Um, I was contacted by the IOC, by the host of these Olympics, Beijing, and even by the Chinese embassy. And um, they basically told me that I'm not allowed to show any video footage other than my room. <laughs> I cannot share any audio from events and from any building at the Olympic. I, I've now been told that all I can show is photos and my own room. The rules are crazy straight. I'm not allowed to show anything from field of play. That's my, my rink where I skate. Um, same goes for even the dining hall where we do our PCR tests. Things that I find super positive here, I cannot share with you guys. I can only show you photos and that's it. Uh, and of course, this is a video of my face and well, it's not the worst background, but that's all I can share you for now. That's why I figured I'm going to talk a little about uh, a bit about the extreme, which I find a bit extreme, security here at the Olympics. I mean, one thing is the face scan that we got all over. It's a closed bubble. Um, but I've been surprised by the amount of video cameras and microphones that are all over the village. Um, I do inline skating. I do cycling outside. We have 750 meters of road where I do my, uh, my daily workouts back and forth to keep keep fit and there is a lot of security guards and there's constantly video cameras filming what we do or filming what they do. Security guards all over um, and most of them don't do anything. I find it pretty extreme that there's for all of these guards as you can see here there is a camera right in front of them that is basically just filming them and you imagine there's another Chinese person sitting 24 7 watching that guy 24 7 um, so it feels like there's not a lot of trust. I've made a full, like another video that I can't publish because it's going to be taken down. Um, they also threatened me to shut down the entire YouTube channel if, if I don't remove my previous video. I'm going to show you some more insights when, when I'm done skating here, when I'm back out of China. And, um, and then you can see what the whole experience was like. The next video, I really wanted to give you the impression of what we do in everyday life, but I can't. So instead, I'm going to show you some of the skating venues. Um, what we call FOP, field of play. And those are also some insane uh, buildings, constructions. It's, it's crazy. Even just a food hall at each venue, the training site at each venue is gigantic. Um, it's hard to believe that they have, at the short track ring, they have three entire dining halls just at that venue. And they have, Wow, more volunteers than you can imagine. Um, I did already go once, I filmed a little. I'm gonna screenshot that and show you a bunch of photos to like kind of get around the rules a bit. Um, but tonight I'm just gonna show you how that looks. Um, there's a bus drive. Again, everything in the, is in a closed bubble. We were either inside this village or we're on the bus or we're at the com competition venue. We cannot leave any of that space. And um, I mean, don't want to be claustrophobic then the Olympics is gonna be some long weeks but um, the skating arena those are the two places I've been to they're pretty similar they have this blue colors all over and you're very limited in where you can go uh, they constantly check your accreditation if it says AA you can go here and there if it says AB you can go to these places and every door there's two people that double check this and um, yeah so you really, you can't go to the wrong place because you're simply not allowed in. We deal with it. We're here to compete. I think we do almost anything. And we trained for this for four years, so minor restrictions. It's not gonna break, uh, make it or break it for us, but um, that's a little rough. There's so much, um, like so many army people walking around the city for kind of no purpose. It's a little odd. I didn't mean this to, for this to be a negative video because again, they did a great job here. Um, but I also just wanted to point out, because a lot of people were, in my previous video, they were like, wow, China is doing an amazing job. They are, but there is also all these restrictions that are a bit annoying. Um, I know some of them are the Olympic rules. We can't promote sponsors. Those are the people that pay us when we're not at the Olympics. Those are the reasons that we're here. That's a little frustrating. And, um, and just no video at all. I mean, all we want to do here is share the experience with friends, with family, and, um, we're a bit limited when it comes to that, but um, 
I mean, it's still got a lot of hair for the future. The village itself is, is still impressive. Um, in this next video, I'm going to talk about the laundry service and the shuttle, small buses inside the village itself, how we train here. We have gyms at like 10 different places here in Beijing where we go train. And I also want to show you how I bike on a road right down here, back and forth, smooth asphalt, but it's just back and forth. And um, how we do laundry inside the village. Um, I want to show you more about the daily PCR testing. We have this little app on our phone that every day we have to measure our temperature and report that and report if we had any coughing or feeling fever whatsoever. Uh, every athlete has to do that every single day. Some of the people that did test positive, uh, they tested negative prior to going to Beijing, but apparently the threshold of, threshold of when they consider that somebody has um, the COVID is, is a lot lower here. So people that were testing negative suddenly tested positive. People that did test positive have been in closed hospitals for, from what I heard, or people I spoke to, up to 12 days. The food wasn't great there, and that was, that was a whole different experience. So Beijing made the Olympics crazy good, and the other things around it, um, I can't tell. So I, I haven't been there myself. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I appreciate it. It's cool sharing this journey. I was like almost touched how many people watched and commented on my previous vlog. And trust me, um, subscribe to this channel because you're gonna like the next vlog. I, I made more of an effort and I did really walk around the entire Olympics try and capture everything with my, my fancy little phone. I'm also gonna share a bit of the gifts in my next vlog, the gifts that we're getting at the Olympics. There's some cool stuff. There's a Samsung phone example uh, we just got when we arrived here so um, it's cool gifts and those are going to be in the next vlog and then my final vlog when I'm, when I'm out of China if they're listening then I can tell you more about that and show you some clips but for now see you for the next vlog thanks for following everybody